This is the Conspiracy Commission Podcast. Welcome back for another exciting episode of the Conspiracy Commission. Tonight's topic, the NSSM 200 report. Boring ass topic. Boring ass topic. Ed was fired up about this just a few minutes ago. Y'all, y'all get to hear a nice little rant from him. Things to create a problem because there isn't one is what I'm fucking trying to tell you. I, and all I of think, it's in front of your no, face. No, I think so. I think no, so. No, I would agree with that. I know there I isn't a problem I agree. at all. No, like, I agree. In the least, I agree. Like all the homework that I've been doing, and I'm starting to draw these correlations. I even told Chris because the way David's lining these fucking topics up, like every single one of them's running into the other one, and I'm like, wait a minute. I remember that. I did homework on that. Wait a second. And you just, you literally start making all these correlations. Like it literally starts to make sense. And I was just like, who the fuck is behind Harry Kissinger? Like who's behind Kissinger? Like he didn't write the fucking report, bro. He's literally the face to blame because look, because look at the information. There's nothing at all. There's nothing at all that ties Kissinger into anything other than he was in charge of the people in the room. I want to know the names who wrote the paper because I bet you that that will lead us to where we're where we're trying to go. Exactly. And you're telling me the only correlation is he sat down with 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 uh with what's his name from World Economic Forum and that was it and they talked about this? Yeah, no, I don't I don't think that there's like you know, he's not like the he's exactly what you said. He's the face K- to wait, blame. Wait, Kissinger right? talk was Schwab? Yeah, they yeah, sat down. He's like he's like Fauci, dude. You know what I mean? 100%. Yep. He's he's the Fauci. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. 100%. And everybody's standing around. Fauci. Yeah. Fauci, you exactly. piece of shit. Yeah. But this is by design. Again, they did it by design again. Yeah. Just like fucking Epstein. Dude, dude. Ah, man. It's just, I should have been a detective, bro. The way I just fucking, you give me the information and I'm like, and you guys made fun of me for the Blue Book Project, but God damn it, you don't fucking know that the Blue Book Project, it went all the way back to the Blue Book Project. Because they were the ones that were in fucking charge of all that information. And also in charge of fucking what it looked like when people... Bro, they were there when people were given the reports. They know exactly what people were thinking. They know everything. They have it all documented. And it started even before then. In the 40s, it fucking started. And we're like, oh, the, the, oh well, MK Ultra only started in the fucking 50s. Well, yeah, but the PSYOPs happened in the 40s. Yeah. Okay. But that doesn't mean that it wasn't, and it goes exactly back to what you said when you start talking to me about fucking the fucking the mathematics and Eddie just because they didn't record doing fucking algebra in fucking the 1600s doesn't mean that people weren't using algebra in the 1600s yeah. because it was recorded in the 1700s or whatever the number is. I'm just I'm just giving the scenario. It's the same mindset. And remember when we sat down and we talked about how the fuck are these 13 families fucking doing something in the 16th century and turning around and 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 and, and and, and, and fucking in, in, in 2021 implementing a plan. That's because we think year to year. And we've been trained to think year to year. That's and we're generation. trained to be on a clock. These motherfuckers see shit different. That's why we can't correlate none of this. And everybody's like, how could somebody be able to control the world? Because exactly what you said. If you got five people in charge of fucking 16, and those 16 people are in charge of fucking millions, exactly. It's way more fucking easier than you actually think it is. Because you don't have to control everybody. Uh, yeah. You just have to funnel the information, how and it only it can go to you? certain people. And now, it's no different than the information that gets given to the principal the principal gives it to the faculty and the faculty gives it to the children you fucks it's simple it really is simple dude he's going off right now bro oh, i love this yeah. shit no i wasn't uh so in this topic we're gonna be talking uh it's such uh, a great about name <laughs> world population controls uh the world population plan of action um Fun all, stuff, dude. All, all all stuff put in uh in, into this report it's pretty big pretty juicy 100 something pages we're just going to be real brief with it though not go too crazy on it Categorism. but uh lovingly and affectionately called the kissinger report not written by kissinger but partially influenced by him he was on the head of the security council committee when this report was published he was secretary of state at the time so we're, we're going to start off by talking about who henry kissinger is we have a few clips about that. Be interesting. Some people are not very happy with Henry Kissinger and what he's done and how he's influenced policy. And uh, we're going to hear about that now. From Renegade Cut. Thank you, Renegade Cut. <laughs> this guy's got a lot of subscribers. Yeah, this was a beast post. 
is actually a uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty interesting. In her book and in this last debate, she talked about getting the approval or the support. Damn, this is a flashback. The mentoring of Henry Kissinger. Now I find it rather amazing because I happen to believe that Henry Kissinger was one of the most destructive secretaries of state in the modern history of this country. I am proud to say that Henry Kissinger is not my friend. Calm down, Eddie. I will not take advice from Henry Kissinger. And in fact, <laughs> yeah, this is Eddie when he's fucking 70. In Cambodia, when the United States bombed that country, overthrew Prince Sihanouk, you know, created the instability for Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge to come in, who then butchered some three million innocent people one of the worst genocides Tell in the Bernie. history of the world. So Tell count me in as somebody who will not be listening to Henry Kissinger. This tense exchange between Senate. Yeah, I mean, as uh, yeah, here you go. Just to get a little touch of the Nobel Peace Prize winner. Uh, for Kissinger, do we have any other stuff? Um, I was just going to have Kissinger uh, just come out and speak, you know, just so we can get it. Uh, little Kissinger speaking here. Nice. Uh, but I, I, again, like I said, I don't really, I didn't want to paint this guy in a good light. Okay. I didn't, uh, I didn't find it. You don't like good. him? I, I just didn't find anything good. I, it's not that I dislike him, but I didn't find anything good. Like, so all the things that they stated that he was a part of, like some way, somehow felt, didn't fall through, you know, other actions ended up being implemented. Something else ended up happening on why these things said or, or or didn't say ended up happening you know like exactly what bernie sanders says like he literally gets the report hey could you let us know like what it would look like if we would bomb like can you give me some bomb reports three days later they're bombing cambodia yeah and they're killing innocent people and they knew that that was innocent people and there's like a term they like a blanket term that they used for it um, like like uh, fire blanket or something like along those lines where like they, they had it as a term that the United States government uses when they're killing innocent people. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it, you know, so this whole thing, like from top to bottom, like most of the countries that he stuck his fingers in uh, to that he claimed he went over there and helped are still struggling still to this day. A lot of those countries are you're still either at war or, you know. They yeah, it's interesting. A lot of the... LDCs in this report, the lower developed countries, lowest developed countries are still the lowest developed countries 50 years later. Yeah. So all the reports that state that he did all these great things, I can't find any. Like, I mean, listen to Bernie Sanders' passionate speech about it. Um, I also have um, some more videos about, you know, the people standing there when he tried to give his, uh, you know, speech. They, they wanted him arrested. You know, they tried to get him, they, they, you know, and people got arrested from the pink movement. Um, these were people that, uh, that were stepping forward to try and get him arrested for war crimes because everybody thinks that he's a war criminal and that we put up people in Germany in the Nuremberg trials who ended up killing innocent people. But, you know, we know that Henry Kissinger uh, called out the plans to have innocent people killed. And, he, and, and they're saying, you know, why is the, the, the sword... Um, only sharpened on one side and not the other. Why are we not, um, you know, arresting these people? But, you know, and a lot of people are saying, well, you know, we're yelling at, Don we're, we're trying to, you know, lock up Donald Trump, but we're not trying to lock up Harry Kissinger. Like, killed thousands, if not, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that he's been involved in, just his orders that he was given. So I think it's interesting. You know, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, we're still trying to, you know, jump on Trump for, you know, some things that he said did or didn't do and um this is stuff that we admit that he's even done like we know that he did it we know that these were carried out three days later you know he went and he bombed yeah, yeah. well i mean you those those lower developed countries they keep them that way intentionally so that they don't use up the resources because we want them right so again mm. again I, I, dude I, james I, is fucking lizard illuminati dude right so again i say to you like so what where, <laughs> why are we celebrating harry kensinger like what is and there are good things that he did. Like, he, he made soccer in America. Like, if it wasn't for him, there probably wouldn't be soccer in Who America. Who fucking cares, dude? Like, <laughs> like, 
get it. No, I'm just saying, like, there are good things that he's done, but the things to win the Nobel Peace Prize wasn't one of them. Like, that's not something that he did that was good because he killed a lot of people in it. And he, and he declined he declined to take the award, which to me said a lot. Personally. Sus. Sus. Ed was really sus about that. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you declined the offer. You know, I mean, think about it. Terrell Owens or whoever it was, wide receiver, um, elite wide receiver in the NFL. He refused to go to the Hall of Fame inductee and, and be in a part of it. And you have to ask yourself, why? Why did he feel that way? That's all. That's all I'm saying. Someone turns down something such as that, which is a, such a prestigious award. You have to weird. ask yourself why. It is weird. That's all. That's all I'm saying. And I, and, I, and I mean that there's a reason behind it. I don't personally know the reason. Maybe because they don't want the fame. That's maybe. That's, no, yeah, I, I love maybe. that. Maybe. Humble. Yeah, humble. No, maybe humble. not. Not because he's the most humble, humble, right? Most person but be, ever. Because he knows that he's done. He's been involved in shady shit, and he doesn't want his name. Why couldn't he more be? On the why couldn't he just be humble? Maybe. 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 Maybe, or we could just coin the term being humble. I don't want that award. I'm trying to be humble. I believe that there's so many more qualified people other than this, other than me in this world. Yeah, he gives like that, like fake response or whatever, right? I mean, but, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm not saying it's 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 it, I'm I'm not saying it's out of the norm, or it's in the norm. I'm just saying that it's a question that should be asked. Don't you find that interesting? I mean, most people who are up for an award would love to receive it. No, am I am I am I wrong on that? You're trying to avoid attention, so you do the most like attention thing. Please, no, please give yeah, it back. He right? even wrote yeah. the organization and said, "Please." Like now he's known for back. turning down a Nobel Prize, right? So, like ironically, like if but you can turn it down, you're I still know, the winner. That is, that is funny, winner. isn't it? Right? You're yeah. still the winner, though. You know, it's like Reggie Bush getting his his uh, his his, 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 Heisman, his Heisman snatched from him, but you know it was messed up on why they snatched it. His 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 mother's boyfriend. Received a Hummer. Do you think that Reggie Bush's award should have been taken from him? What does his mother's boyfriend have to do with him? So they gave him a Hummer and they took his Heisman from him and never gave it back still to this day. Hmm. Interesting. Life isn't fair. <laughs> Scroll up here on the wiki. What else is what uh, we got on the wiki? Got down here? What we got on the wiki here? Part of the George Bush administration. Part of the wiki. Yeah, well, we had scrolled to like oh, yeah. uh, his his like uh, countries that he was involved in, Oof. and uh, to this day, some of these countries are still pretty rough. I think most people would say, which I think are interesting, right? Because again, he I, didn't really help out if I, these places are still. In it's this. insane. I mean, if you look at some of the countries around the world, like how are we doing what we're doing here? And these countries, some of them still don't have power. Right. They have no infrastructure. I don't want to get wrapped up into this too much, but could we just real quick just bring up wars and the centuries in which wars were were fought? I just want I just want uh, to get the to get everybody to, to to take a look at this incredible. You know, we got a cre- incredible website. You know, the Britannica. They're pulling up uh, all the wars that were recorded here. We have uh, by century all the wars that were recorded. Um, and it's very interesting, right? Because once we start to reach a certain point in, in, in human history, um, we really just start disliking each other more than ever. Or, or hear me out, or, or maybe. Don't do it. Or maybe do it. <laughs> somebody figured out how to make money off war. So what do we do? We start having more wars than we've ever had before. 1600 to 1700 1700 to 1800 and we don't look back even in the and we do not look back even in the 1000s you see a big jump and we do not even look back at all fuck you that's why we have six foot fences i'll kill my neighbor that's what we're doing that's what this is look at this this is just crazy to me how now we're just fighting wars like wait, 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 wait. go back up there chris go back down to the 2000s no, keep going, keep going, keep going right there. Look how many more we got to go in this century. We got a lot more coming. If the trend is the same, think about it. Yeah, it, look, it looks like we're missing a war here, right? Yeah. yeah. I know. Syrian civil war? No. Uh, Ukraine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that would be four on that list. Mm-hmm. But I mean. But geez. it just shows we got we got a lot coming. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, if I, the trend stays as it's been. I mean, we're only I, in 10% of this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, yeah, it's just crazy to think, though. I, I, just, wanted to, I just wanted to bring that up because, you know, Harry Kissinger is involved with a lot of that. In a lot of wars, he's uh, had his fingertips in a lot of presidencies, a lot of presidents. They literally say the reason why everything happened in Cambodia and all of that stuff was so that he could get Reagan elected. And that your Democrat's not going to give you the deal that this Republican will give you. And they go and they do it that way. And there's even phone call conversations saying like, hey, man, this is, the, you know, you can't be doing this from the president before that wanted to get reelected. It's crazy. They wanted Reagan in. There was a reason they wanted Reagan in. And then they did it again. They bombed again to keep Reagan in office. It was it was crazy. It's great. And this is all documented uh mr kissinger being involved in so it wasn't just cambodia it wasn't just that but he had his fingertips in a lot of things um that that didn't result for the people that were involved in in, in a good way i mean like this is history it's all right there for you you know i mean why are people asking to have harry kissinger uh be locked up in jail if he's such a great person that's all i'm saying he's a very cas charismatic individual but you know, a lot of things that he was involved I don't in think, transpired I don't think, into bad things for a lot of people. I don't think there's anybody that's been on that level that's had that much influence that hasn't Have, probably had an enormous amount of people die over a certain amount of time because of them them putting their fingers I mean, everywhere. he's completely, like, once you look him up, I mean, the accolades are incredible. Over a hundred and something awards throughout the world from different countries. Um, you know, he was a... You know, he fled from Germany as a, as a German Jew born in Germany, fled uh, Germany while his, uh, you know, his, his, you know, they were being attacked for being a German, a Jewish in Germany at the time, fled the country at 15 years old, came over here to the United States, lived here, went to a bunch of uh, colleges, um, you know, ended up working in the military and then just didn't look back, you know. Uh, he's, he's definitely a decorated individual. I mean, he's written a plethora of books and, and, and you know, an, an actual paragraph uh, full of, of book titles that he, he's written. So, I mean, he's definitely a very intelligent, very influential when it comes to governments around the world. Uh, and, and, and the things he's been involved in is definitely incredible. But everybody always has questions to ask him about the innocent people that he's uh, given order to definitely have be a casualty which is which is crazy to me that you know i heard someone present the information and say that you know kissinger um didn't have to stand trial but everyone in nuremberg did so that's that's an interesting that was an interesting statement that's then i heard an someone interesting else, statement. then i heard everyone else say that if you're gonna you know you're gonna put donald trump up on the on the stand and have him um be someone that is gonna get put underneath the magnifying uh, glass then they said Kissinger should then Bush should then you know all of these people should which is again an, another interesting take I mean you know these people are saying this because there's there's validity to it otherwise they wouldn't be saying it I mean and then there's people who just say things to say them so I guess you know they're, they're, those people are going to exist but you know it's definitely interesting 9-11 happens you close the door and then you write a book and tell everybody to read the book yeah, yeah, no, no. You just read the book, and it was like you were there, uh, dude. That's yeah. something you tell your child. Like that's you tell your child that at some for your child to listen. At some point, there are too many coincidences. That, yeah, that's just <laughs> way too many. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like at, at some point, you know, you know, you have to start saying to yourself, "Wait a minute, this isn't this doesn't look right." But now, so didn't didn't he want to control like the world population because well, that's what the Kissinger two... report is. Yeah, yeah, because we they wanted to. You know, we're, we got too many people in this world, don't we? No. Oh. That's that's, that's oh. what they want you to believe. Yeah, that's what... James is totally on Team Illuminati with that, for sure. No, he's just asking. He's saying, like, that's, you know, like, that's what... No, he's about it. He wants he wants the, the smart ones to breed. He doesn't want the stupid ones to breed. I mean, <laughs> doesn't a civilization collapse over time? I don't think so. I think the... I think the the whole don't don't restrict people's rights and control how, how they're able to have kids is not conducive of a uh, 
good society that you want to be in? No, I wouldn't say restrict their. I mean, I would just say stop making education so hard to achieve, uh, get a hold of. I mean, when you when you literally say that like the only way you can get education if you have no money is you have to be able to be dominant in your academics in order to achieve something that people who have the money are capable of achieving then that's telling me automatically that you're singling people out like numerically so on purpose you're making your population stupid over time because you make it unfeasible for everyone to achieve you get what I'm saying? Like, it shouldn't be something that's special. It should be something that everybody should achieve, but that's no what, matter what. There's no buts involved. But, but I think if you that, want a smart population, then it should be achievable for everyone to achieve that goal, which is what? Knowledge. It should be for everyone. But it isn't for everyone. I think it, it is. I think it is now. Uh, no, it's not possible. With your, with your, everyone. with your, why not? Well, not everyone in the world, right. obviously. But, sh- but it should be, is what I'm saying. But, oh. you're, but you're doing this on purpose. I mean, it's very easily obtainable for everyone. But you choose to allow it not to be. That's, that's what I'm saying is the problem. It isn't that, pe- that dumb people no. are having children. It, it's the fact of the matter is it's not achievable for everyone. Well, no, because you have... But it should I mean, be, if you, But if you look at economics, it says you have to have certain different people on different economic levels for society to work. I get I I get what you're saying, right? I get what you're saying, but at the same time when the percentage of people that are going to college and and actually going to what they went to college for is minuscule too. Like oh, that, yeah, I would that, agree 100%. That number, yeah. That number should change. So then what are you really telling me that you're using this knowledge for? Like why are we doing all of this? Oh, it's it all about like the that? money. Right, right. Again, because so I think you can learn. So I, I, I think you can learn the same thing that people that are going to college can learn from your computer. Right. Yeah. I mean, if you sit there and you research and you study, you're going to get the same exact knowledge that they're getting. Mm-hmm. You watch videos of people debating about a specific topic, etc. Over, you're going to get the same knowledge. Now you, you're not going to have the same credentials, obviously. Yeah. The, if you don't go to college, is what matters. I guess it, it, it depends. I think it depends, though. Honestly, it depends on what what field you go into, what you're doing. There's nobody that uh, ask anybody when they went to go 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 get a job where they had a degree and the employer. Nobody asks to see your degree. They don't. They don't say, "Hey, can I get your degree?" Now it might be on your app, your resume, but. Nobody's ever like, hey, can you send me a copy of your degree? Right. That's interesting, yeah. I mean, what if they just never asked you and they just called the school? They could, they but I can them. guarantee it. Chris, poll. Chris, poll. Poll. Nobody's ever called to confirm, so, and, unless the only time I believe that doctor? that happened. A doctor? If, you're, if you have a specialty like that. Yeah. But interesting. If, you can't get your licensing and you take, can't take your exams if you don't go to school for that. Right. Right. So you have to have that stuff. But like if you're, you've got a business degree and you're going to get a job that requires, even if it requires some sort, they say that that's what they want. You say you have it. I'm not saying lie. I'm saying nobody checks that. Pull. I'm not saying a lie. <laughs> Hit him with the bowl, Chris. <laughs> All right, so where are we at over here? What do All right, check down. So I mean, we kind of like talked about who Kissinger is. We talked about how Eddie hates Kissinger. How, I, you know, he. I don't hate. Him. He's <laughs> talked about Eddie's thoughts on. Just Kissinger. saying that the narrative is not lining up. That's all I'm saying. The narrative's not lining up, right? I mean, he's, he seems like a great guy. He's got an incredible Doesn't, family. Uh, he was been involved in a lot for a Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, I mean, he was he was divorced too. But so. wasn't he trying? Isn't he just trying to help everyone by keeping the population down though? So that we all that's a great point well, that's the, a great who point the fuck is that helping who's that helping that's great he's just worried we're not going to be able to feed everyone he's actually yeah. a good guy that's what we're worried about. <laughs> that's what we're worried about that's what we're worried about not it's worried. that all the people right now that are in the entirety of no, the world can he's fit wor- in one he's worried about the 10 million how many, how many continents do we have the 10 million that die every year because he's of asking. malnutrition man. how many continents are there in, in, in the world yeah. that we live in he's worried about There's those those kids in africa that don't have water bro but all the people in the world could live on one continent and that's too many right we have too many people in the world 
think about that for a second when you put it in terms of where would ge- you where would you you couldn't grow the food here to feed all those people they could live here. You could be on well, you're here. You're acting like the rest of the world got deleted because we're all on one landmass. It didn't. It's all still here. Like it, it's just I think all on I, one landmass. I, I, that could work. I still shipping, think being like shipping food every time, like that's always happening. You gotta, no, it's just you. you we have to. Pre- that's the problem. It's the shipping the food. It's the current food model yeah, that is the problem. Yeah. It's, it's because the way no one's society was designed. It's, to begin yeah, with. it's because everyone's consumers now instead of just growing most of their own shit. Exactly. That's why. It's fucked, I think. Or it yeah. could yeah. be fucked, potentially. Because of the logistics of transporting everything and all that fucking yeah, bullshit. It's going to cost too much money. So, well, in turn, what should happen is we should get back to doing our own agriculture. We should get back to growing our own food. We should get back to having our own animals that we need for our family and only our family. And worried about just that. And then there won't be any of these other problems. But, but that's never going to happen because they don't want you to own property. Mm-hmm. Plus, they're already in control of all of that. So that's not. They want you in the mega city, being the consumer. <laughs> they want you renting. Yeah. Yeah. Don't own. Don't own. Yeah. Don't own. Well, why do you think they're making insurance and all of this and all this other stuff so unobtainable? Like people have to sell their house now because they can't afford the insurance on their home anymore. So they have to sell their house. Did you think that that's not by design? Like you're literally just waiting. That insurance is literally only waiting for a day to happen that may never come as long as I own this house. And what happens with all the money that I spent and gave you throughout the entirety? It's the worst. Yeah. Think about that for a second. A big scam, dude. Moving on. Let's not get caught up in insurance, right? Because so, that could end up being a show. So what? <laughs> want us to talk about insurance. What is the NSS NSSM, guys? Oh my God. What is it, dude? It's a report. It's kind of like an oh shit letter. Kind of like the tone. Like uh this we this is a this is a big problem and we need to do something about it now. It's kind of like how they like phrase like climate change now. Yeah, like in 74 like. they were like, "Look, 7 uh, like what is it, 73 the report was written. Um before that they had to have been talking about in the 70s and 80s that they wanted um uh there'd be some sort of fertility control yeah on the population there was already some like some boards created about population control before this stuff came out but we We're, got uh we got fuck where i just i was just thinking of something which Go was ahead. which was very interesting to begin with is that you want there to be the control of how the babies are being born right when we went and we went and looked at it, right? And like every country has literally been in a negative, like since the fifties. Like every country's not producing enough. It's children. been on a decline in, yeah, in since decline. the fifties. Yeah, since the fifties, yeah. I, That's what I'm saying because I'm telling you that these problems aren't problems, and they're literally just literally filling up rooms of people to draw you up a problem. To tell you, like, this is a problem. When I mean, think about, like, every single human being that lives in this world, we can all fit on one landmass right now. And, again, how many geological different continents are there in this in this world that we live in? And we can all fit on one right now. So it's, like, it's something to think about. That but well, how much space is that per person? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, it gets in, in detail, and I forget what it is, but, I mean, how much space does one family need like do you need more than an acre of land like do you need well, more? N- well, I don't no, be confined. well that's what i'm saying is i don't know i you, you think an acre of land you're fucking confined who are you yeah what i want to live you know how big, i don't do i want to live on how big an acre is i want to live before on, we even yeah a little, yeah. little, little, little smaller than a football field yeah i mean an acre is a big it, it's it's a big it's a big spot it's a lot to to mow it's a lot to take care of but I want to live on the continent that nobody else is living on. I see now. Now you're you see you're part of the elites now. You sound like, you sound like you're <laughs> no, no, no. The I, reason why I think everyone should have the freedom to live wherever they want. Yeah. But of course, I'm just the point, giving you in terms of the point is we're not overcrowded just yet, dude. <laughs> right, right. There's enough landmass to go around. Yeah, that's the point. I don't. You know. I, I mean, that's that's what this whole damn report is about. You know, and maybe the what one, they're trying to convince maybe the of. one thing that you could argue that someday there won't be enough cattle to make so, cheeseburgers. So I mean, like, is it just is it just the fake problem to get get some type of a reaction in the form of new policies and control so that they're they're able I mean, to have if, more control? If you thought about, I mean, what about the about a shortage way, of food? Look, if you thought about a way to generate money, and you were like, look, I need another reason 
to rake in billions of dollars so that I can go do something else with this money from the United States government, you know, and then they talk to the UN and now Turkey's got a plan and this country's got a plan and everybody's got a plan and they're all just giving money to help with this plan. Now you have all this extra fucking monetary money that you didn't have before yeah. and you can go carry out whatever it was you were trying to you, do. You just created I mean, just another, another slush fund for yourself. Yeah, I mean, you're just you're literally just creating s- something that people could funny, funnel money into. And well, where's it going? I don't know. But the, the numbers say that it's a problem. Damn, we're about to hit eight mil. The, which which where is it in here in this report it says 12 no no, no but they, but they're like they're like in 8 to 12 we don't know if we're going to be able to grow enough food At eight what 12. are the stakes we don't know whether technological developments will make it possible to feed over 8 much less 12 billion people in the 21st century we cannot be entirely certain that climate changes in the coming decade decade so in the 80s they thought will not create great difficulties in feeding a growing population Especially people in the LDCs, which is their abbreviation for these lower developed countries, who live term for them already under increasingly marginal and more valuable vulnerable conditions. There exists at least the possibility that present developments point towards Malthusian conditions for many regions of the world. And what happens is most of these places that are underdeveloped, the underdeveloped places end up being the the place that we get all the iron and ore from, oh, the places minerals. that we're getting all the minerals from, the places that we're getting. All the things, you know, the metals and the materials to build things from. You know, it just I gives mean, them another tool to be able to, like, control their development to keep them in a position where they can be easily extracted for their wealth. Yeah, they can be eas- easily manipulated. And if they're not prospering, they're not using the minerals. Well, the they, minerals are going out. They're yeah, not, I mean, the issue is anytime one of their leaders tries to nationalize their resources or, or get them out of fucking... Stupid fucking deals where they have to sell it for dirt cheap. War. War. Assassinated. Coup. War. Yeah, man. It's always it's always something. Like, I mean, you know, it's just it's just crazy. This was just another one that Oh, suddenly that, terrorists appeared in your territory. <laughs> yeah, what's you have terrorist? terrorists at your what's borders a now. You know? It's like nine eleven they in, they invented um what is it? The Patriot Act. So if you're ever um if anyone ever says that you lizard guy is a terrorist, that's it. They can hold the lizard guy without uh, any representation of a lawyer, they can hold you without bond and bail for as long as they'd like, until they deem you as not a problem anymore. I mean, you got to think about that. Like, there's no more rights anymore for you to have, and all they have to do is coin you with this term of a label, and that now you have no more rights. You have nothing no more because you're deemed now as a terrorist, and that's something to think about. When uh... it is real spooky, that new bill that they're trying to do about all this internet censorship is kind of along the same lines of the uh, patriot act and removing a lot of your rights too yeah see, and that's... then being able to spy on you and do it without telling you no that's not cool yeah but the which was which report. was which is like tacked into this whole fucking stupid tiktok shit which is why i think the only thing that was in on the news was tiktok ban tiktok ban tiktok ban so you don't actually look at the bill that's trying to be passed which is another fucking patriot patriot act level fucking restriction of your rights which is very sus. Yeah, something to think about. Something to think about, people. Go to your school board. Make so sure you're paying attention we, in your schools. Make sure you're voting in your towns. Make sure you're doing these things. We got that's, a, the, uh, that's the power you do have. Yeah. Yeah, you're local. It seems like you can make a lot more of a difference locally. Yeah. But you got to get involved. You got to get in there. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's the same That's the same thing, though. There's still... There's still, still Agendas being pushed and people being, you know, and pushed to the forefront. And this guy is this guy. And you're just voting for that guy because you don't like the other guy. You don't even like both guys, but the other guy you really don't like. So now you're just voting for this guy. Well, I mean, going, you know, back to Kissinger. I mean, look what's going on right now. It's just another war for money. What are you yeah. talking about, Ukraine? Ukraine. Yeah. 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 It's just a war for money. It's terrible. We got out of we got out of Afghanistan and the the, Dude, mo- the, crazy. Mo- the money the money dried up. Isn't a little that bit. wild? And they're like, man, we need some more money. What are we doing here? What are we thinking? Yeah. And if we go Add back, another one we, the Britannica. Come on now. Yeah. yeah. And, and Put another you, one down. And if you go back to the dates that you pointed out, all the wars, we got a lot of wars to come. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I mean, think about that for a second. Looking at those wars like that, like how many we've just had in the past century. 
You know what I mean? That's just that's it. That's that's that's, that's crazy, man. And and there's no way you could tell. They me get that the money, dude. That many they get people wanted to fight. They get yeah, yeah. people the people dead, which <laughs> gives them the whole fucking. We need to lower the population. It's like how do, how do you not learn your lesson, right? Okay, war, people die. We go back to normal for a little bit. War, people die. We go back to normal for a little bit, like. And we're not re we're not reproducing, the people. We're not putting back into the pool of people fast enough. That we're having, them taken on a daily basis, so. It's interesting. Wow, man! People so, die. Let's run through the. So, uh, they die. We die of. Don't we? We die of a lot more things nowadays than we did before, though. I mean, yeah. since this report though hasn't yeah. our life expectancy gone up, or in the last hundred years or two hundred years, it's gone up. Isn't that what that one graph showed? That one graph said that maybe we recently it's gone down a little bit. In the forties, we were in the in the forties, uh, forty years old to fifty years old. 49 to 50 something along those lines and then all of a sudden we bounced up in the 40s uh, the modern mo- mo- modern medicine to, to the 70s yeah, to 73 78 years old so that was interesting. modern medicine but yeah, there's the graph right here here you go there you are 72 there you are 73 what was it back in the day? Uh, so 1950s, it was 45. Yeah, so that's that's modern medicine kicking in, you know? You're able to take care of people. You're able to save people. They're not dying of certain sicknesses anymore. I mean, from this is current, right? So this is just a projection. That's a projection. But, I mean, if you think about how many people we have that are ODing, how many people are dying yeah, of di- that diabetes? That, wasn't a, that that wasn't a statistic. Right? No, they didn't. They diabetes didn't. wasn't a statistic. Yeah, no. they didn't. They didn't track that, and it wasn't there because you weren't eating the shit that you're eating now. Right. You were cooking your shit. You had your acre. Right. You know. Well, that and like the infant mortality rate has gone completely kind of gone down yeah yeah because there was so many babies that were being born still born things that exactly weren't like now modern medicine's capable you know of saving baiters we got things that are definitely now yeah i mean we definitely could definitely uh save a life now i'd say more than we i feel like i would have expected it to be a little higher though i agree like 80s 90s maybe me too now this graph still this report would say that this graph is still worrisome because with higher life expectancy, your your population growth increases as well. Right. Because people are around longer. But if we, I want to go back to. The- well, that go and then that goes back to the changing later on in what the the seventies eighties when they they changed the food pyramid to tell you that you needed to eat all those carbs and everything. They just like changed that shit up again. I keep seeing people make memes of it because like meat is like below fucking cereal or something is it really? oh yeah it says yeah, like, like fru- cereal is like a fruity loops is better than fucking steak <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or like a glass of milk or something wow i heard something about ufc fighters and um he was talking i forget i forget who it was talk i'm gonna butcher this dude i'm gonna bu- i probably shouldn't even open my mouth but I'm here to create content, so you know if I butcher it, you know call me Eddie the Butch. You know what I mean? I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Eddie the Butch. Call me Eddie the Butcher. You know what I mean? But no, I I, I think that they were saying that like uh, a lot of the USC fighters break bones, uh, break a lo- break more bones that eat uh, just vegan diets. That I think you have to eat more red meat and iron. Oh uh, really? To get stronger bones. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't don't quote me on this, but. I would think that'd be the case unless you were taking supplements, for sure. Right, yeah, I don't want to get involved in, in that because I, I'm sure that that's something that's, you know, that's huge over there, too. Maybe maybe these, maybe these a couple of these guys who were vegans weren't doing some other things, and maybe that's why it, it contributed to now a this broken is, bone or two. This graph is what gets these people hard, bro, the people that made this report hard. Because I think this shows that... Uh, maybe not that their plan is working, but the goals of their plan are being achieved nonetheless. Right? They wanted to lower birth rates. They want fertility rate down. See, and that's what I think. I think, you, you, Ed, you believe that it didn't happen. It's not a problem. 
where we believe that this is their plan in action and this is why birth rates are going down it's because of everything they're doing i mean well i, I think I, he, he 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 doesn't like their stated problem right he he, he disagrees with that it More is pe- a problem. I'm yeah, just disagreeing yeah, with yeah. the reasoning behind it. Not that their plan but, isn't working or yeah. whatever. I just disagree that they are with doing the it. You know what I mean? With the reason behind all of why all of this is a thing. I disagree with the reasons. Like, I don't think. Yeah. Which I agree with, too. I think it's, yeah, it's 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 bullshit. I mean, it's just fear. It's it's just more propaganda and fear. To what if there's just not enough space on the I mean, think, ships that we all like have this. to get on when the think about, cataclysm Think comes. about it like this, bro. When you put things into perspective like this for somebody, you know, maybe that this is a reason why somebody's not going to have a kid. And this is why for, for turtle rates are down. It's not that we're not capable of having babies or we're not even trying. This is maybe just, you know, it could be multiple reasons on why people are not having children. It is very in depth. Yeah. It's not necessarily because their plan is implemented. Yeah. I mean, take a look at the world that we live in today. I mean, you know. It's, it's tough right now to find a lot of things that are great right now because all right nihilistic if eddie if you're diving into the internet like the shit's everywhere you glass know? half full eddie you know what i mean like it's it, it is every the negativity is definitely everywhere you can find it around every corner for sure yeah he you still find reasons to be happy there's cool shit all the time bro come on dude we're about to see the reset of the u.s dollar dude the reset <laughs> whatever happened to the greenback we are one. getting ready to have a reset. <laughs> Yo, there's so much stuff that's getting ready to pop off over the next decade. Dude, you, you're right. Klaus Schwab talked about that in his fucking COVID-19, the Great Reset, right? Like seeing yeah. the U.S. dollar be removed is the world. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. It's They've like, already. They're, they're, that's why I don't know if like if all the fucking news and like rumors that like I oh saw, the deal's happening. See, like, like I saw ooh. something recently. The guy said. Well, with everything that's going on, should I take my money out of the bank? And he said, no, don't take your money out of the bank. Why would you take your money out of the bank? Because you, you, could, you, you could go buy you, an asset you, that's not going to be fucking devalued to fucking shit. What do you mean? Like, if you truly believe that the U.S. dollar is going to collapse, then you would be retarded to hold U.S. dollar. C- correct. You're right. Yeah. I would, you would, if you knew it was going to collapse, you would buy something else. But if they just do a hard reset... And they take the value of what's in your bank account, yeah. and now that's in their digital currency. I just don't know if that's what. It's or like, you get fucked because you got a bunch of money under your mattress and you can't turn it in. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a, a way to like wash out all of those fucking yeah. for people. You get but rid, like you dude, get rid of all the money that they. It's didn't not going to be instant, right? On. It's just going to be like U.S. dollars going to collapse in like one day. There's going to be mega inflation here. Right, there's going to be some laws passed to. You don't think there's going to be a, a warning, a, like a switch? It just. No, I mean, just U.S. dollar trading is just going to collapse, right, against all the other currencies. Like right? overnight. Yeah. Well, whenever the fucking market's open, yeah. It, there's going to be some announcement, like the fucking Saudis not taking U.S. dollar for any oil transaction, right, and just in going to their currency or want or whatever it is. And just right? all those other countries. Immediately, U.S. dollar and they collapses. They just start that day. shorting the dollar. Yeah, immediately, everyone starts selling dollar, dude, because because without there being the exchange of all those U.S. dollars, because you have to buy the oil in the dollar, it has to be constantly exchanged. Then well, that's what I we've already said. inflated our fucking supply so much. If it's not being used, then it's it's gonna get wrecked real quick. Dude. That's always. Oh, I've always said that. I feel like all China has to do is say we're not trading with you. Well, that's what's. That's, that's what it. Saddam well, then who buys their shit? Then they're just producing with no buyer. I don't that's know. It's like, it's, the rest it's like of a the coupled world. relationship. It is. It but is. You act but like we were the only ones who needed oil. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, you go to war with them. But what we were, You're dude, not going to give us your oil? The you one the war. one fucking thing that Trump did was make us energy independent, dude. That was, like, the only fucking good thing that happened. Like, we, we weren't, like, buying oil from other people. Like, we could do that again. All I'm saying is, if they say, we want to buy your oil with our dollar and not with gold, and, and they say no, what do you think happened? We went to war. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. I mean, yeah. Right. Like, I mean, what a great, that, what a great reason for a war, right? And then you're like, and then you see it, right? You're like, oh, the pawn pieces were fucking being manipulated this way because it was a war. It wasn't because the fucking they were gonna reset the dollar. That was the there. fake out. Or maybe the dollar just does get reset as well, and we get a war. Like, and then we go there, knows, and then we go there, and we find out that they got a Stargate. We're not leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're not leaving. Bitch. Yeah. 
<clears throat> think we were still there that long for oops, fucking oil? Oops, they started destroying all their ancient relics in the museums. Oops. Oh, oops. no, dude. I mean, just be honest about it, right? Just uh, like, Come on, there's no honesty in business. Okay, we went there. The deal f- we went there for the oil. Let's get the deal done. Like, just say that. Yeah, for the oil. For <laughs> isn't it interesting? I remember seeing this article that like as soon as we left Afghanistan, China got all the mineral rights to there too. So maybe that was another reason why we were over there. Oh, mineral. Mineral rights. Yeah. yeah. How do you get mineral rights to some shit that ain't even yours? Because the fucking IMF comes in and is like, hey, man, we're going to help you rebuild your entire infrastructure now that we just bombed the shit out and of it. And that's what I... And you have to again, pay us these nice interest I don't understand. Well. If you look at all of these... Yeah, yeah. LDCs. World Economic Forum. Yeah. If you look at all the LDCs, they have lots of resources. Yeah. But lots of resources. Exactly. Yeah, they're the that. most mineral-rich fucking country. Yeah. It's... We... They're, they're kept that way intentionally so For sure. they don't use the resource. And we're going to do an episode on economic hitmen, which is going to touch on that perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking perfectly, <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, I was yelling at Ed on the phone earlier today Ready about to that. Me. I was like, exactly, Eddie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cancel! <laughs> okay, let's, let's go over quick some of the cool things that they pointed out in their executive summary here. There's some really awesome stuff. Just to go over the whole table of continents report... Table of Contents for this uh, NSSM or 200 report. Um, So we have part one, an analytical section. Chapter one, world demographic trends, population and world food supplies. That's chapter two. I'll just start reading the different chapter names. Minerals and fuel, economic development and population growth, implications of population pressures for national security, world population conference. I think that was um, what had happened right before this. Uh, part two, policy recommendations. A U.S. global population strategy. Action to create conditions for fertility decline. Population and a developmental assistance strategy. General strategy and resources for aid assistance. Functional assistance programs to create conditions for fertility decline. Food for peace program and population. What? Internalization organiza- er, international organizations and other multilateral population programs. Another goal that they wanted to set up, dude. And there's like... There's a lot of that now, like Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, all these people that are the, like these like health organizations that are multinational now, dude. It's, it's, this this guy on this video connects him Bro, to I a was lot of like. Literally hearing about something in Wisconsin or Maryland, all these people in this town, like this guy is giving like thousands of donations, over two hundred and eighty thousand dollars worth of donations to like all these different funds and like over a thousand transactions and they're starting to think that like something's up and they're doing something and there's there's starting to look. I, I see any more we'll I'll 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 shout it out. But it's like Is that what you some, posted? Some weird stuff going on in Maryland or something like that or or uh on the on the east coast somewhere. So it's which was interesting. There's a lot of weird shit going on. UN organizations, special agencies. You want to start encouraging private organizations. The provisions and development of family planning services, information and technology. So like abortions, stuff like that. Wow. Research to improve fertility control technology. Development of low cost delivery systems for fertility control, for sterilization, for birth control. Mm. Utilization, which is which has happened now. You can just get your shot monthly. Just get your fucking booster. Utilization of mass media and satellite communication systems for family planning. Action to develop worldwide political and popular commitment to population sustainability, which is kind of like what they talk about. The UN put out another report similar to this where um, it's the uh, World Population Control Plan or something. I'll I'll go over the name of it. There has to be some sort of validity if throughout history you continue to hear about it. What? The population control. But we didn't. Did you just start talking about this in 73 or the 70s? Yeah, like 50s, I'd say. It kind of like started. And then I like really wonder. started taking off like about now. And you got you got the 1974, the Club of Rome. They put out their first report, the, the limits there to was, growth. There's no population control talk before then. Which leads into Agenda 21. Like, No. No, this is fresh. This is new. That's why even when we did the Project Bluebeam and 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 we did that, like that was literally like that one guy, Sevy, what was his name? What was that one guy? The, oh shoot. I forget the dude's name, bro, but like he was the biggest uh 
pusher of that in the early 70s to begin with. And then, you know, they tried to say that he had nothing to do with it, with the, what do you call it, with the Star Trek episode, and tried to, like, make him look like, you know, he was just copying this shit, copy and pasting it from somebody else. The guy we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. When actually you got Behold the Pale White Horse was a book that was written by William M. Cooper or William B. Cooper, something like that. William Cooper. Bill um, Cooper, I think, yeah. maybe. Bill Cooper, William Cooper, something like that. And, you know, like, they were talking about that then. You know what I mean? Like, the whole thing. Before all, any of this fucking... Um, so those were some of the uh, uh, chapters and just like the topics of the different chapters for it. But what we're going to do next is we're kind of just going to go over their executive summary. They have like, I don't know what it is, how many points that they have listed here. I think it's quite a lot. We're not going to believe that. It's like 30, 35, 30 something points. All the, all the pages I printed are. Right. Which thank you very much, Chris, for keeping us organized because we're yeah, literally a great. bunch of baboons in here. Agreed. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you just grab any point in here, yeah, over like, over thirty five too. Like this one says, it's like reduce family savings and domestic, like how to how to control economic factors to control growth, like yeah, they want to keep you poor. <laughs> Are they at least they're listing how like they they theorize like the Play population. Right. Growths and all these other socioeconomic th- th- things, yeah, uh, affect it. Because it's not just this. one thing; it's a whole bunch of stuff over time. But yeah, that makes right. you move in a direction. Bottleneck, yeah. And people, we're not making this up. This is all information you can go and uh, you know come up with your own hypothesis and your own theory on what you believe that uh, this is all for. If you think that this is for our best interest, moving us in the direct in the right direction. And, uh, you know, you want your government in absolute control because you're a fucking peasant and can't make decisions, then then, then maybe you think <laughs> Thank this you, is Eddie. for you. Thank you. you know? <laughs> but if you're not a peasant and you can make decisions for yourself, well, then obviously you should uh, take your nose out of the book and start reading a few of these uh, pages so that you can get a grasp on what the government thinks of you. So, yeah, that act that I was talking about that the UN did, the, uh, the World Population Plan of Action. Opted at the World Population Conference. They're having conferences on our dollar. Recommends that countries working to affect fertility levels should give priority to the development programs and health and education strategies which have a decisive effect on fertility. (laughs) International cooperation should give a priority to assisting such national efforts. I mean, I think it's crazy that they're trying to stop us from having babies when like literally the graphs and everything show us that like we're not having enough babies and society at one point could just yeah i mean well i think the fucked up part about this too is it's it's not just the united states they're talking about they're talking about the the whole planet yeah so it's like think about like some of the poorest countries that you know about you know it's like I don't know if i agree with that though isn't like a lot of the poor the ldc's low developed Countries. Are, aren't isn't their population growth higher than the developed countries? I mean, from what me and Chris were looking at, every country is below the rate. They're not, they're not even plus, even the countries that have a higher population than us. They're, just because you have a higher population, that doesn't mean not a, not a higher population. I'm just saying, aren't some of those uh, lower developed countries their population growth is faster than what ours is? I we didn't we didn't check those numbers. Okay. We just we just checked overall growth rate ov- overall over the the period of time and I think that we're 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 going down as opposed to going up. We're we're not having enough babies like throughout throughout society. So I guess yeah, in that's, turn, that's I guess not, that's not like it doesn't make any sense. What? Cuz the growth the growth rate Mhm. From says it's increasing 0.8 percent okay but like if you go to birth rate decline well yep. because life expectancy is going up so Death we're rate. growing oh okay okay right but death, I just the death rate is down yeah, yeah. but I, I, I but with all those wars and all of that you know I mean yeah we're we're, we're, we're staying alive but we're still losing every hundred years like wads of people that are fighting in the but yeah they're slowly decreasing our fertility to a point where like we, we might start 
regressing not, in not being able to have babies yeah then it's gonna get fucked which would make sense in in the grand scheme of things that you can suppress something for so long that then you lose the ability to do it anymore you know like 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 if I don't over think, generations i don't right? th- i don't know i don't know i would i don't know about that like over generation. I don't know if you don't know human, about I don't sterilization know. on a on a worldwide level. level. You I don't think, think it's I, gonna go that far. I think just like organisms and like human nature and evolving. I don't think it it wouldn't be. It just wouldn't make sense in the order well, of the world. Well, what if in the way that you're doing it is you're like you're you're literally fucking with the hormones of your body to, so that you're preventing yourself from doing it, right? Like, what if you're being you fed they food? Say, they literally say if you don't use it. You lose it. That that's a real term. It's coined that for a reason. Because if you don't use it, you lose it. And now now let me finish what I was gonna say. If you can get out three generations of, of children, right? Three generations of women, right? And the two generations before that third woman, you know, didn't didn't ever you know, they always took that medication, they always took that medication. One that ended up popping out, the one that popped out can't have kids. That's oh, possible. Yeah. That's possible, right? And if you're only having one child per family, which is which I think that that's what that's what it is, because I think it used to be four, right? I used to I think the number used to be four. Now we're down to like one. Yeah, I mean I guess that makes sense if that that lineage can't continue that, because maybe I mean, there wasn't a son that was born or you know or they can't have child yeah. children. Yeah, you know over the course of a time or maybe those three generations of of children that were taking those supplements not to have kids got off it to have kids popped out a boy and he can't have kids yeah this shit ain't good his shit ain't pumping right you know what i mean i mean it's possible i'm not saying that these are are definite effects i'm not kissinger i'm not writing the numbers down i don't have a room full of people you know we're just sitting here talking about the what ifs you know i mean what if this is something that over the course of time just like right now like arguably like like we don't know what a cell phone in a baby's hand the existence of its life is going to do to it we don't we don't know Right, we we could we could have an assumption. I don't think we it's don't be, even know for our for our ourselves. Right, we don't. We don't because a, a person hasn't lived the extended uh, extended of their. Nobody's life. lived eighty years with a cell phone. Exactly, yet. It hasn't happened yet. So we don't know. So now we're just throwing things around, talking about it. Hey, what if cell phones do this? What if all of this information really being fed to us like this? bottleneck to us like this is a bad thing and it's not a good thing maybe what happens is we start losing other things that we were very capable of doing because why we use this a lot you know maybe once you stop using your hands and you're just swiping with your thumb maybe you start to lose all these abilities that you were capable of doing you know maybe you just lose them now because you're doing something else you know what I mean? And it's out of sight, it's out of mind. You you don't use it, you lose it. You know what I mean? It's it could be it could be something like that. Like we don't know what's happening because it's an ex, it's a science experiment right now. We're all living the experiment right now. We have no idea. We got uh in the mineral and fuel section here. I thought these ones were really good and it's kind of like touch on what we were talking about earlier and how we keep these LDCs LDCs. What's the number we at, Chris? We're at uh, ten minus. Uh, uh, fifty four minutes. Okay. Good, okay. Not bad. We're on point eight of the uh, executive summaries for anyone that's tagging along. Yo, before we hit record, what did I say? We have too much content here. Like, we have to do... An hour and a half. You know what I mean? Like, there's just too much. I think it might... Yeah, it might be an hour and a half. That video clip I got, we could do 10, 15, 20 minutes of it, however long we want to (laughs) go. I had a 19-minute video just, just not... Looking at him in a good light. So, (laughs) it's what happens. Um... Number eight here. The rapid population growth is not itself a major factor in pressure on depletable levels of resources, fossil fuels, and other minerals. And since demand for them depends more on the levels of industrial output than the number of people. On the other hand, the world is increasingly dependent on mineral supplies from developing countries. All right, so we're acknowledging that we're That's dependent. it right there. We just talked about. And if rapid population yep. frustrates their prospects for economic development and social progress, the resulting instability may undermine the conditions for the expanded output and sustainable flows of such resources. They, ba- he ba- they basically said there that the population in that LDC doesn't matter. It's what they're going to do if they develop it, the fucking output. Right, and that what that says? Rapid population growth on a whole, I think, is 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 an issue. But like, if you do, if the world increasingly is dependent 
on mineral supplies from these countries. And if rapid population frustrates their prospects for economic development and social progress, the resulting instability may undermine the conditions, blah, 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 for, for us to keep getting the resources. So basically, as they're saying, if we allow them to develop, we won't get their resources. It's not that there's not going to be enough gonna, resources for everyone. It. It's that the demand increase is going to be so fucked for them that it could be could make it unstable. Which is interesting, right? Because you, you think you would want more population there to be able to handle the increased demand. But I guess instead the route they took is they just want more people of all ages, of all those people to work for fucking dirt cheap slaves, I guess, so that we can get all of our minerals and shit that we need. And export well, yeah, cheap. that yeah, that reason too. Well, there would be serious problems for some of the poorest LDCs <clears throat> with oops with rapid population growth. They will increasingly find it difficult to pay for needed raw materials and energy. Fertilizer, vital for their own agricultural production, will be difficult to obtain for the next few years. Why? Yeah, who knows about that? Why would that be difficult? No, they're like they're like they're like okay, we're gonna make sure that happens. Well, why would that be? <laughs> we're like, gonna make to sure why? they can't eat. Why? Imports for fuel and other materials will cause grave problems which could impinge on the U.S., both through the need to supply greater financial support and in the LDCs to give them more loans to make them more in debt. I thought what was great about the country that we lived in is we didn't need anybody. That uh, everything we want and everything we need is in-house. Oh yeah, well, Just illusion. like in New Jersey in the 1920s, we were the silk capital of the world. Yeah. What happened with that? Why did we stop? Why did we no longer be the silk capital of the world? I don't know why. I don't historically. I don't know why historically why that stopped. But at one point in time, we we were it. Another you know another because thing that we figured here. out if we went somewhere else, we could get it made for cheaper and we could make more money. But that wasn't until way later, though. That wasn't until way later after World War One and Two. Yeah, yeah it I wasn't think. Until after that. But we we produced no, stuff. because we were the producers of everything. That's what I'm like saying. Henry Ford was producing cars. Exactly. And they started producing other things. I mean, then they start producing, you know, tanks and stuff like that. Or yeah, but I would say international, what international, whoever it was. Because 80s? who wants to make clothes when you can make missiles, baby? Come on, baby. <laughs> we sell weapons now, dog. <laughs> we start war again, bro. Right, right. That's how we make the money around here. Uh, we wouldn't were... have to make anything. We literally wouldn't have to make anything if we just drilled for What's oil. wrong with making stuff? Right, where there's what all the, our energy costs. The, no, there's there. nothing wrong with it. I'm so just what? saying we wouldn't have to even worry about it if we if we had control of energy. Because when you can control energy, you can control everything. Dude, when are we doing a topic on fucking OPEC and all these right? fucking big oil companies? And if you control energy, you control everything. I'm not against it. I mean, you, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I've never even looked into the, like who like the owners of these things are. I'm sure they're just fucking connected to 13 family sh- something, bro. Well, I mean, yeah, what was I thought the, the Rockefellers were, right? Yeah, right. Standard Oil. Yeah. Weren't the Rockefellers? And then they got oil? Yeah, but he got like broken up, but not really broken up. But he owned like major shares in all the other companies or something. I mean, just if you're if you're owning major That was back shares. then though. Like I wonder who it's who But do they who's did, I right want to know if any of those families them, have or? stake in the oil in places like, you know, like Saudi Arabia and stuff like that. I would say no. That's what makes all those guys king over there that's why those those saudis are not fucking around that's why they walk Dude, around like, with tigers a... and lions and their friggin rolls royces that's why they have hawks that they walk around with on their shoulder like that's that, that that's what they're about yeah, you see, right you guys like, haven't seen any of that, that they're, they're, they're trillionaires they're, they're different over there yeah. right bro yeah, like they're, what they're talking about like crazy money they gotta yeah they gotta be the richest people dude crazy if not it's, if it's not like some illuminati people or whatever so do you mean, think? Just so you don't think the they're con, they're con, they're being manipulated and controlled as well by the thirteen families? What if they're just like one of the thirteen families? I don't know. Well, that's yeah, that's what I'm curious if they like got brought in. I've never heard anything crazy like that. I mean that 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 desert money man has been has been there for a long time. Right. That's that's We've old been trying to shit, get over dude, there you know for a I mean? long time to get that. That's why wars are still. I mean, biblical wars are still being fought over there. That still never changed. I mean. That's a very special place over there, I'm sure, for a reason. It's very special. That whole place, I mean, you know, historically, it's a very incredible place. You know what I mean? They, they talk that that's where the first step of man came from. 
you know, that's where Jesus walked. That's where, like, you know, I mean, so many things, bro. So many things transpired over the Giza plateaus over there. You know, some of the, the biggest monoliths you ever seen in your life come from over there. Man. I mean, yeah, it's 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 an incredible place. Ain't nothing like that oil, though. That's what they want you to believe. So we're <laughs> finishing up that point nine. They were also worried about uh, the LDC's efforts to obtain better terms of trade through higher prices of their exports. So, yeah. prices. As soon as you try to charge more for your minerals, you get whacked. Remember, even you on get the replaced. Titanic, you know, you know the Titanic. Those white line star ships were the only ones out on the water because he was the one to own the coal. And there was a coal shortage. That's when that ship went down. That's why there were no other ships in the area that can go and save the Titanic. It wasn't possible. There was a coal shortage. I didn't know. That. Yeah. Was wow! A culture, yeah, when I did when we did the Titanic episode, that was one of the things that I pointed out. I missed that. And I also I also pointed out in the same episode. You guys go back and watch how the one ship had extra blankets, enough extra blankets for every person that sat in a lifeboat on the Titanic. They had they had pillows, blankets, and sheets already ready for it on the ship. On another ship somewhere else. I don't Already know. had it ready. Just saying. Who knows if it went jump, down on perk? I'm jump ahead to that. jump ahead to check that point episode out, here. man. The Titanic episode. Check it out. That one was a cool one. It's pretty dope. Yeah. David was pissed. Yeah, that one was a cool one. I like that one. David were you there for that? Pissed. You were there for that one, dude. Yeah. 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 But those were two things that stuck out at me. Wasn't that oh, like yeah. one of your first every, ones? Too? Every single guy in the boiler room getting off that, that next stop. Every guy except one. Yeah. Every single guy on the ship that was driving the motor got off. Think about it. Come on, man. That's crazy. I, I, I think the whole like switching of the other boat, dude, and like just for the insurance fraud thing, I don't know. It's could have been it was, probably would have been pretty I, hard, I don't right? think I don't I, I mean obviously that helped out, but there was the richest people in the world went down on that ship and yeah. instantly made other people who weren't the richest instantly the richest. And those people right got there, off the boat. And those people were the ones to get off the boat and take their very special valuables that they had put on the boat that were supposed to go and then wasn't else, it fucking morgan was reported in a newspaper somewhere else than he said he said he had to go to the dentist he wasn't feeling well he something like go, that yeah and then yeah. he's reported at some like outing yeah yeah so the whole thing was fishy yeah. wow we're different topics we're changing gear we're, back yeah. on the kissinger number report, uh this is silly 17 here there's a need for more information on the cost effectiveness cost effectiveness different approaches on both the supply and the demand side of the picture on the supply side intense efforts are required to assure a full availability by 1980 of birth control information and means to all fertile individuals especially in rural areas improvement is also needed in methods of birth control uh, most acceptable and usable by the royal rural poor on the demand side, further experimentation and implementation action projects and programs are needed. In particular, more research is needed on the motivation of the poorest, who often have the highest fertility rates. Assistance programs must be more precisely targeted to this group than in the past. That, that, was, that, was, a quite, that was quite the line that you just stated. How are you going to target the you poor and the the poorest, the poor, market them birth you, control? You, you the literally best. said that the poor have the best fertility. Yeah, poor, poor rural. That 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 doesn't because they have the land a, to provide for all their fucking kids' needs. But in a fucking urban environment, if you're some poor person, you you can't. But that's what you I'm saying. Why the how those LDCs, their population, their growth, they have more babies yeah. than we do because because of that statement there. Yeah. Exactly. I think it has something to do with it at least. There's like some other factors that they point in here too. Um. That's interesting. It may well be that the desired family size will not decline to near replacement levels until the lot of the LDC rural poor, rural poor improves to the extent that the benefits of reducing family size appear to them to outweigh the cost. For urban people, blah, 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 this isn't a problem. It's already becoming apparent. <laughs> um, and then they're worried about how the, the, uh, the AIDS, AIDs, like is... Uh, like money aid, foreign aid stuff. Aid recipients and donors must also emphasize development improvements in the quality of life of the poor. So, you know, these foundations are going to have to masquerade as if they're 
actually benefiting the poor by oh we needed all this money to build a well i'm sure there's some people that actually go out and do stuff like that but or oh we need all this money to go vaccinate all these people or oh we need all this you know whatever it is interesting uh another way to get money yeah I mean, because that was my point. Like, a lot of these countries with Harry Kissinger went to still are struggling. Um, a lot of them that are on the list are still in, uh, if not shambles. Um, yeah, we already talked about 24. So what are the stakes? We don't even know whether technological developments will make it possible to feed over 8, much less 12 billion people. Like, dude, that's the great thing about reading fucking a 50-year-old report. Just laugh at how fucking wrong they were. <laughs> We're not gonna be able to feed eight billion. We're doing it no problem. Yeah, dude. And so many people still go to bed hungry. And we're throwing out tons of food. Every day we throw out tons of food. Actions need to be accommodating to, to actions to accommodate continued population growth up to six billions by the mid twenty first century without massive starvation. Or total frustration of developmental hopes. Jeez. <laughs> it's going down, huh? We're, we're, so, yeah, we had the mass starvations, guys. Remember when we passed 6 billion and we had the massive Uh-oh. starvations? Uh-oh. It's <laughs> I don't over know, some, and done with. Some of it is just the fear porn, dude, right? For them, for the uh, legitimacy for them to get this control. Well, I mean, in 74, this sounded mm-hmm. great, right? It sounded feasible. You had the Club of Rome coming out with their book. You had all these people doing all these reports. We're going to run out of all the resources. We can't keep this population thing going. I mean, yeah. Climate change is not going to let it happen. Digging in the ground sucks, you know, but it's part of life. Got to dig. Call before you dig, people. Make sure you call before you dig. All right? We need to concentrate on some key countries here. Those countries are India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. Nigeria, Whoa. Mexico, Indonesia, Whoa. Brazil, the Philippines, Thailand, Egypt, Turkey, Ethiopia, and Colombia. Wow. Together, they account for 40% of the world's current population increase. What the what? Yeah, see? The LDCs. Wow. There are more people there than there are here. What is, what is LDC again? Low, oh. Lowest oh. developed country. Yeah. Oh, okay. Lower developed countries. That's how they're looked at. But I, I would say that they're kept in that form for a reason, right? So we could exploit them for their things that they have that they that they can offer. No bilateral assistance. Well, I mean, I think it, the funds are available to be given. Trilateral commission, right? I started thinking about that. Yeah, I think a, I think a part of it has to do is if you keep if you keep a population poor, their outlet is baby making, right. Because when you have money to do things and go out and and do stuff, it takes away from that intimate time you would have when you're just, I mean, there's no job, you know, you how you live, you're with your family. You have nothing else to do. You're not, you, there is nothing else to do. And if you're not agriculturing and you're not hunting and, and you're not fishing. Uh, for, dude, yeah. Do you know what's funny, dude? It's, it's 13 countries, bro. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's uh, not. This is desirable in terms of the U.S. interests and necessary in political terms of the United Nations. But progress, nevertheless, must be made in the key 13. And our limited resources should give major emphasis to the... <laughs> to, to the what? To, uh, to the key 13, right? The 13. Is it 13? Bro. India, Bangladesh, Bro. Pakistan, Nigeria, Mexico, you Indonesia, Brazil. Don't tell me it's 13 Philippines, and it's 12. Thailand, like Egypt, Turkey, Ethiopia, and Colombia. Yeah, it's 13. It's 13. Right? Yeah, right. There was thirteen colonies, people. So one family has the Yeah, colonies. right? What if that's the case? That'd be one funny. family has they've got the mineral rights. That'd be wild. In each one of those countries. Does, does that heat you up, Eddie? Yeah, I mean a little bit, because the correlations now are starting to get fucking ridiculous. And now I know why a lot of these conspiracy theorists start to yell because all the information that's like readily available for everyone to see. You can like literally see all these correlations. It's like it's pretty interesting. You're like, no, and everybody's like, no, there's no such thing. Well, so my question would be, so then why are the, all these correlations? Like one time, two time, maybe that's a dink, but now we're just on like 
13 times. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, 13 times. And, like, it's always 13. Like, I mean, it was 13 families. There's 13 colonies in the United States of America. I mean, <laughs> like, now there's 13 countries that they're fucking got a stranglehold on. Like, hello, people. <laughs> I mean, just keep the correlations. Just keep coming, people. As called for the world population plan. Just a coincidence. Developing countries. Merely. Merely. Developing countries and those aiding them should specifically take population factors into account. National planning include population programs and such plans. Whoa. That's great. Family planning information and materials based on present technology should be made fully available as rapidly as possible to the 85% of the populations in key LDCs not now reached, essentially or sent, uh, essentially rural poor who have the highest fertility. Fundamental and developmental research should be expanded and aimed at simple, low-cost, effective, safe, long-lasting, and acceptable methods of fertility control. Supported by all federal agencies for biomedical research in this field should be increased by 60 million annually. Just write ourselves the check for 60 mil. Yeah. Add that to the fund. So, right. they, so they can test birth control. It, it, it increased by 60 million annually. Increased. increased. Rem- didn't you hear what, that? that was, so what's 60 remember, million? Mem- dude? Remember, guys? Remember, oh, I mean, yeah. 1970s money? That's, James, that's remember we just right, did the know? last show and the conspiracy was that the United States government was snatching up babies? Like yep. To to test on them. To test on them. Yep. Yeah, it was like that was not a conspiracy. It was found out to be true. But but when was that though? We should have checked the dates on that, bro. Because if that's around about the time they're doing the testing on this, that's what it was for. What the fuck? That's bonkers. It, it's just bonkers. It just, it, this is bonkers. These are either someone's like purposely putting this shit on the internet to make these correlations on purpose. <laughs> I'm doing it on perp. <laughs> it's like the longest episode of punk ever. Right. <laughs> it's a hundred years of punk. <laughs> yeah. oh, Dude, man. for its own merits and the consistent with the recommendations of the world population plan of action, priority should be given in the general aid program and selective development policies and sectors offering the greatest promise of increased motivation for smaller family size. In many cases, how do we, we should make sure to brainwash people and the promise of increased motivation for smaller family size. That's fucking crazy. Only many, have one kid. In many cases, pilot programs and experimental research will be needed as guidance for later efforts on a larger scale. The, the preferential sectors include providing minimal levels of education, especially for women. I don't minimal know. Minimal levels. Right, but just making sure women are, are at least educated, right? Perhaps they're just referring to places where like women don't go to school at all. Maybe that's what they're referring to. Yeah. But yeah, it does sound like bad. Yeah. The way the way it reads. Minimal. Yeah. Reducing. It didn't say minimal at best. Well, I mean, I think you got to think about this too. Have you ever thought of this aspect? They wanted to minimize the size of the family because back in history, families were larger. They were not only that; they were more tight knit. Yes. So they had more money. There was more wealth in yes. the family because they were all there together. You can't generate that wealth with one child. Right. They had 8, 10, 12 children that then were all a part of that family. And you didn't move 100 miles away either. Yeah. You were well all said. there. Yeah. Yeah, well now, said. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I mean that would that would keep the that would keep the balance of the monetary system. Yeah, them, out of the hands. Them of and more, yeah. We, yeah. We, like less people, yep. More if everyone was more capable of having a family. But I mean, society today is definitely that, that I would say that that part, like if you were to ask me that part of their plan, that part of their plan to me exists because I mean, right now, most families are split up. Most families, you know, divorced or they just stay, you know, they're just staying in the house, but they're broken up and they're just trying to get the kids in school and they're going to do their thing or whatever, whatever the case is. Like today, the family is not what the family was in the 40s and 50s where like it was all about the family. I think like the, you know, the dynamic of what a family is now has changed a little bit compared to what it once was, you know, like. 100% 100% the muscle and bustle of you know the United States of America was you know leave it to beaver you know what I'm saying it's like two boys two kids well I mean four this kids, is this the Brady is, Bunch you know I mean like 
you know, what was the other one that was real big? The um, What do you call it? The Partridge Family. That was another one that was big that had a lot of kids in it. You know, a lot of them shows back then did. You know, a lot of them shows, they all, what was the other one? Little House on the Prairie. They had like two houses full of kids, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, it was ridiculous, Little House on the Prairie, right? I mean, all those shows back then, it was big families. You know what I mean? All of them. Yeah. That's how you, that's how Dennis you ran. the Menace, all of them, right? That's how you ran a farm. Yeah. So we got a couple other like good points here that I can't really see anything bad with. Expanding wage employment, especially for women. Reducing infant mortality, including through simple, uh, low-cost healthcare networks. Developing alternatives to children as a source of old age security. What? We start getting a little weird here. What? That's weird. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Increasing income of the poorest by especially in rural areas, including including providing privately owned farms. I don't know exactly where they're going with that. I don't know about people just getting privately owned farms from the government. I don't know what that means. But increasing the income of the poorest, I mean, okay. The poorest. Yeah, I don't don't know if that's particularly happened. Increase. But I can't really see anything wrong with that point. I agree. But we had a weird one for developing alternatives as a source of old age security. That's weird. Uh, Education of new generations on the desirability of smaller families. Hmm. How do we uh, program a generation into having desirability of smaller families? I don't know. How do we? That's interesting. You, I, got, a, you got a chart on that? I can tell you how you do it. How do you do that, James? How do you do that, lizard boy? I'm trying to figure out how you say this without you can't without getting canceled. Yeah, exactly. Get canceled, James. This is the show where you're you're supposed to get canceled. We're doing this till we get canceled. <laughs> You're the anonymous <laughs> lizard, dude. I mean, it's... It's a it, speed run, dude. Come on. Get canceled as fast as possible. <laughs> it's all about pushing the... The... Get canceled. Come on, do it. <laughs> do it. Get canceled, you pussy. Get canceled. <laughs> no, I mean, it, you, if you have a bunch of people that think they want to be with the same sex, then you cut down on the... the the births as well. That's easy. Yeah, that's gonna definitely help out. Yeah. If you yeah, if you get everybody thinking that that's the way to go. Yeah, I would say. This is just spooky shit though. But that's, that's what I'm that's saying when you talk me, about man. brainwashing because you're talking about it when you're you're propaganda, dude. Fuck yeah. It. There's a lot of lot of stuff out there. Well, what do they got? What do they got right there? What do you got? What's crazy right there? What do you what do you let it, the folks know? And ladies and gentlemen, this yeah, is a uh, document that you can all go and read yourself. We're just reading it off to you. Likes it, David. Something that was confidential until the eighties. Yeah, and then they released. These yeah, why is this? Why was this classified for fucking ten years, dude? Because they didn't want you to know about it when it was yeah. going on. You know what I mean? Like development of a worldwide political and popular commitment to the population stabilization is fundamental to any effective strategy. Right. So how do we make sure that the strategy is going to go well? I don't know how can we do that. It requires the support and commitment of key LDC leaders. They have to be on board, Ed. Wow. They're not on board. It's not going to work. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Dude. All those places are kept poor intentionally, man. This will only 100%. take place if they clearly see the negative impact of an unrestricted population growth and believe it is possible to deal with this through their government action. <laughs> Turkey has a plan. <laughs> The U.S. should encourage LDC leaders to take the lead in advancing family planning and population stabilization, both within multilateral organizations and through bilateral contracts with other DLCs. This will require that the President and the Secretary of State treat the subject of population growth control. What an a-hole. This guy doesn't know anything about technology. Dude, I thought I turned off that shit. It's not a knower, dude. In, uh... We're fucked. He's not a knower. Of paramount importance and addresses it specifically in their regular contacts with leaders of other government of other governments, particularly LDCs. Whoa. You have to be a hundred percent on board, bro. You gotta you gotta play the dog and pony show, or this isn't gonna work, bud. Wow. What dude? Dude, play ball or get murked. That's dude. why there's only thirteen of them. <laughs> dude. <laughs> what? You can't get nobody else on board. Nobody else agreeing to this, you know what I mean? They're not agreeing. They don't like it. Something smells fishy. And so uh, 
the World Population Plan of Action and the resolutions adopted by the consensus by 137 nations at the August 1974 UN World Population Conference, though not ideal, provided an excellent framework for developing a worldwide system of population slash family planning programs. We should use them to generate UN agency and national leadership for an all-out effort to lower growth rates. Consecutive action by the U.S. will further our objectives to this end. We should strongly support the world population of plan of action and the adoption of its appropriate provisions in national and other programs. Urge the adoption by national programs of specific population goals, including replacement levels of fertility for DCs and LDCs by 2000. Achieve DC. What's DC? A developed country. Whoa. Whoa. I feel like they achieved those goals. After sustainable preparation in the U.S. announces the U.S. goal to maintain our present national average, fertility no higher than the replacement level and attain near stability by 2000. So uh, they didn't reach that goal. But that was something that they wanted to achieve. That's crazy. Initiate an international cooperative strategy of national research programs on human reproduction and fertility control covering biomedical and socioeconomic factors as proposed by the U.S. delegation at Bure... Bucharest, Bucharest. Ah, fucking butchering that name, dude. It's okay. You're allowed to butcher. Act on an offer at uh, that place to collaborate and other interested donors in the UN agencies to aid selective countries to develop, to develop low-cost preventative health and family planning services. Work directly with donor countries through the UN Fund of Population Activities. Isn't that the fucking best name? The masquerade population control. <laughs> no, it's population activities, dude. Come on, bro. It's. <laughs> Come on, everybody. We're going to go do activities. Come on, everybody. What the fuck? Come with me. We're going to go do population activities. It's, it's fun for the whole family. Everyone's going to get involved. You're going to love it. You're not going to own shit. Like, dude, you got to agree to all this if you're in one of the LDCs. <laughs> you're going to love it. You just got to play ball. You're just not going to own a fucking thing while you're doing it. You don't have an option otherwise. Well, yeah, that's why you have the government. You're going to pay taxes on your bread. Every, every breath you take, you're going to pay taxes. You have the ultra wealthy and then you have the poor. That's it. That's what you got. That's it. Got to make sure that these third world leaders should be in the forefront and obtain the credit for their successful programs. In this context, it is important to demonstrate to the LDC leaders that such family planning programs have worked and can work within a reasonable period of time. Yeah, man. Just don't let the don't let the earth get hit by a rock or something, you know, and everything get fucked up. Right, because whoever is rich ain't gonna be worth nothing. Then <laughs> ain't gonna be worth shit. Your whole lineage ain't gonna be worth nothing. To Nobody's su- gonna care about that no more. <laughs> to support money only matters now because of what we put into it. To support such family planning and related development assistance efforts, there is indeed a need to increase public and leadership information in this field. We recommend increased emphasis on mass media newer communications technology and other population educations and motivation programs by the UN and USIA. Higher priority should be given to these information programs in this field worldwide. That's just straight up prop, dude. What? That's crazy. Written down, dude. Lay out the prop. Lay out the prop, guys. Blanket in the prop. All all the mass media. More propaganda. Whoa, dude interesting yeah that's scary man here? that's pretty uh where pretty do we go from here it's, written, fuck? it's written down in a report where do we go yeah. from here right <laughs> oh government you're not trying to do us wrong ever it's written down in a report it's not april fool's day <laughs> they throw in the fucking oh we could be wrong man could be even worse there's an alternative view which holds that a growing number of experts believe that the population situation is already more serious and less amenable to the solution through voluntary measures than is generally accepted. Uh-oh, it holds that to prevent even a more widespread food shortage and other demographic catastrophes that are generally anticipated, even stronger measures are required, and then some of them fundamental. Very difficult moral issues need to be addressed. I told you, dude. What the fuck? I told you there's not enough for everybody. These oh, we got to take some, some actions that are going to test our moral character. Our own consumption patterns, Talk mandatory programs. People. Talking about eating people. Tight control of our food resources. Talking about eating people, Ed. <laughs> you guys are bugging. 
In the view of seriousness of these yeah, issues, explicit consideration of them should begin in the executive branch and the Congress and the UN soon. Like, dude. D- it said eat people, didn't it? No. But, but uh, no, when it said talking about the decisions or the choices we're going to have to make. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the very difficult Mora issues need to be addressed. Yeah. Come on, bro. You guys, now you guys are taking prop. You guys are pushing prop now. You know what I mean? Like, no, that's what I'm saying. That's what that. That's what that whole point is, right? You guys are blowing lines. Bro. Nah, I, I think it's. Know. I think it's just saying that. Um, well, you're, you're gonna have to change. You have your to habits. kill. You got to kill people. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. <laughs> no, I, exact same thing, basically. They're either starving or killing them. That's, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're they're just off. This is an alternative view, which holds that a growing number of experts believe. Right. So they're just saying that it's not in our. It's not. That's not what we're reporting on. But like in our. Rep- in our search for information, this was a alternative view to what we're presenting. Right, Could be right. even worse, dude. But right. it's just like, dude, they have they have to throw that in there, Fear right? Monger. To like, to be like, because now like they can be like, oh, if some emergency just happened, dude. I mean, dude, we gotta take over, man. We gotta have tight food restrictions. We gotta do all this stuff, dude. Like, we're gonna have to do some mandatory programs that you're gonna have to take part in, man. Yeah, because there's going to be this fire in the sky and everybody's going to have to turn their guns in because Alien said so. You guys know that that when that happens, that you don't turn shit in, right? You know when that happens, right? When they say that, like, oh, the alien said. They were not not even like, oh, that's that's like our wet dream, but they're even going as far as to say a growing number of experts believe that the population situation is more serious, right? It's like they're just they're just like giving themselves the in, right? What would you do? Well, There's geez. aliens in the sky, and they're gonna no, said they're gonna kill no. us if you don't give your fucking. BB they say you gotta chop your nuts off. You're watching the news, and they're just like, "Well, the alien said it's time to turn in your guns." Like, <laughs> I really want to know like, how many that, people are like, "Oh, okay, let's go do that." Everybody, everybody, don't do it, please. <laughs> please don't do it. Who goes and does it? Does somebody do that? I'm sure some people do, yeah, right? All the bozos, dude, <laughs> fucking walk out and go, all right. And then they all get murked, I don't, right, for fucking walking out, dude. I don't know, dude. I feel like if you own a gun, you're probably, like, if you own a gun, then you probably believe in the First Amendment, right? I would say so. Yeah. So if that's the case, you would never want to give up your gun. And now yeah, they're telling they you, you, you if they feared you into it, if they gave you a problem, right? If they presented you a problem, they got to kill people. Problem, problem, reaction, solution. If they presented you the problem, right? Which is aliens are going to come down here and kill all of us. If you don't give your gun up, they said you have to give your gun up. Otherwise they're coming here and killing us. I think they got to kill a bunch of people with aliens. I mean, it's, I don't know how they do it, but they right. got to kill a bunch of people to make us think. Give up the guns. Or they just do what the show that we talked about uh, uh, two episodes ago, Blue Bean Project, and they pretend like a bunch of people died because they, yeah. you know, they yep. show some lights in the air and then they, they, they plant some bombs on the ground in a city setting. You know? Yeah, no, you're right. You know, and then, and then they go on and then they sh- they're plastering it everywhere on the, on the news and they tell you everybody got to hand it in otherwise they're gonna come and get us chris can you pull up that uh clip that i'm trying to show people they're gonna come and get us this is all speculation people i'm just you guys gotta read the report if any of those topics interest you do you go read it out maybe a certain chapter title interest closing you. out here with the we're gonna close out here with a video from uh is this guy making kissinger look like a good guy this is uh no no i wouldn't i wouldn't say so it's it talks specifically about the report and uh Shows like how it's connected to some other stuff too, other people. Doctor David Ayub on NSSM. Oh, so this guy's 200. a doctor now. Okay, so he's got credentials. I have no idea. I have no idea. I haven't confirmed any okay. of that. Okay. Credentials. I have Rockefeller done. in March of '72 concluded the two-year study. Rockefeller. And he was asked by Nixon. A committee was formed. I think it was called the Population. Uh, or Zero Population Growth Committee, Population Count. Oh, he was president of the Population Council. Nixon appointed him head of this committee, and he said, study the population issues in the U.S. and let us know what our futures are going to be economically with regards to overpopulation or population growth. Here's what uh, Rockefeller said to Nixon. After two years of concentrated effort, we have concluded that in the long run, no substantial benefits will result from further growth of the nation's population. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Key statement. By its very nature, population is a continuing concern and should receive continuing attention. Later generations and later commissions will be able to see the right path further into the future. 
key All right, nothing terrible. In any case, no generation needs to know the ultimate goal of the final means, only the direction in which they will be found. So we have a pretty high-level document in America saying Sketch. that, you know what? Sketch. Sketch. Problems. You don't need to know how we're going to do it, right? So that's why this shit ended up getting classified. Then you need to know how we're going to maintain this shit. Just, just let us handle it. Crazy. Keep his gun. Yeah, yeah, please. And no, you don't have to tell the American people. <laughs> Key document number two, and this is probably, I still shake my head at this, this may be the most notorious document in the history of the United States. And I'll show you why. It's the National Security Study Memorandum 200. That's uh, the one Kissinger we were just report. talking about. was the director of the NSC, the Secretary of State, submitted this document to Nixon in 74, I think, just a couple years after the Rockefeller Commission report. Now, it's interesting, Kissinger was a protege of uh, Rockefeller. He came up through the ranks and, uh, and was assisted a great deal, so I'm told. Um, it was declassified in 89, so it was top secret for several uh, years. The focus was, again, uh, population growth, but on the international scene, and mostly economic, not social. Their conclusions were this, and you can guess the conclusions. Growth rates are unprecedented. Uh, the lesser developed countries are growing much faster than our nations. Uh, this will threaten the U.S. imports. It will threaten our national stability, and we have to do something immediately. The tone of the document is 200 pages plus was urgent. We have to do something now. It's critical. The sky is falling. Mm -hmm. Their goals were to have a replacement. It's interesting that he said it was 200 pages plus, country. right? Like, I don't think that, was the PDF that I was looking at 200 pages? I don't know. I got 175. I was like, yeah, I think it was 153 or something. 157. Yeah. 175, 157. Yeah. It's interesting. Anyways. Sorry. Developing countries in 1985 and replacement fertility in the lesser developed countries by 2000. So they're actually going to take their program to developed countries first and then export it to the lesser developed countries. It doesn't make sense because they're more concerned, but I think my interpretation now, knowing what I'm gonna tell you next, is I think they needed to be a home base, work out the, this place where they had control, rather than go to a foreign land and try to work out how they're gonna you know, inst instill propaganda to reduce population. Let's work in our home territory, we control the media, we control the healthcare system. That was probably what they were thinking. They identified the target nations they were gonna use. They wanted what? to use multinational organizations. Legalize abortion was key, financial incentives, Propaganda and even coercion were to be used. Um, the activities must not appear coercive, however. We must emphasize individual rights so they don't know what they're getting. Reproductive health was uh, piggybacked to other general health issues. So they can take that pill of poison and it looks, from some angles, not like poison. But look at this. They were going to emphasize sex education, women equality, daycare, improving social security so you won't need as many kids to help you when you retire. And these are kind of the social issues that we faced for the last 50 years. Did it come out of this document? I mean, these aren't really social issues. These were government issues under the guise of social movements. Seems like that's plausible. Hmm. Yeah, there's national and global population control policies. No question. Have they the problem to give the solution yeah, to? Global uh, Alliance for vac Vaccines and Immunization. Create the problem to provide. Let's look at uh, Gabby a little bit closer. Who are they? Problem, reaction, um, solution. Their goals, it's an organization which has encompassed all the international efforts for the last 50 years, 60 years plus, to immunize the world. This was an earlier initiative, and I think the first initiative... This was an interesting theory on how he uh, thinks the uh, had a program called expanded program reduced fertility is happening. Uh, it went through various revisions, and it became a children's uh, vaccine initiative in 1990. Same players, just a different uh, uh, organizing head. So Gabby is an organizing head of the current you know, the movement of the day. Gabby, one of those NGOs, non-government and organizations that they said needed to be formed. Control. Vaccination to the third world. On the surface, there's nothing here about population control. This is, let's better the world. Um, their goals are to vaccinate, and this is all they do. They don't provide cod liver oil, they don't provide water, sanitation, crop, you know. This is vaccines, this is what they do. They want to prove the health of the poorest 70s nations by vaccination, every aspect, development, implementation, and so forth. Got to make them richer by We're getting them boosted, baby. Bill Gates with three quarters of a billion dollars. They have over $5 billion committed. Uh, $4 billion commitment was just given this fall in September by several European nations. Their goal is 12 to 15 billion. So this isn't jump change. This is a serious organization. They want to give the usual vaccines to the world, some of the ones we don't get here, yellow fever and so forth, um, oral polio, which we no longer give, and any future developing vaccines, rotavirus, HIV, and so forth. Here's a, this is from their website. They're comprised of government agencies in both countries, so it's, it's uh, bilateral, developing governments and developed governments. Bilateral. Uh, NGOs, bilateral. World Health Organization, bilateral, like USF, talking World about. Bank, private organizations like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and industry, the vaccine manufacturers. Now this list looks familiar. I've seen this somewhere before. Here's the NSSM statement. Here's who they said they were going to use 30 years ago to reduce population. World Bank, World Health, UNICEF, UN Population Fund, donor countries, private groups, etc. It's the same thing. Maybe a wild coincidence. But the trouble is... <laughs> Maybe. What do we say about coincidence? <laughs> Bullshit, dude. Straight Tommy Bill Cockis, dude. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> 
keep this going. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got some interesting stuff here. They're doing something uh, that's completely Talks about, opposite. like, fertility yeah, stuff NSM in a second. NSM 200 wants to reduce the population somehow. Gabby wants to increase If you didn't get the hint by now. Or so it would seem. <laughs> Through, I mean, doesn't good health promote growth? I mean, you would think. I mean, if you can't feed yourself, why would you want 10 kids? I, you know, right. makes sense. But, well, let's look at Gabby a little closer. Uh, they have supporting nations, and there's the list, USA, Canada, and the Anglo-European countries. It's an Anglo organization. So all the DCs are on and, the left. Uh, the recipient nations are, I would say, non-Anglo for the most part. And all the LDCs and the are on the right. Uganda, 92 million, Nigeria, 81 million. So there's some big money. And in fact, Nigeria, I will say, was, was number one on the list for, for NSSM. They were really concerned about growth in Nigeria leading Africa. So it doesn't surprise me that Gabby is vaccinating the heck out of Nigeria. Comparing the target lists, NSSM, their targets for Gabby, their recipients, uh, the list isn't identical, but this is 30 years apart. So uh, it's similar. I think no one would argue. It's a similar list of third world countries. No, NSSM picked 13 nations. Gabby, they want them all, 70 poor nations. Wow. This is right out of the NSSM document. How, are, how, would, how is NSSM going to do oh, it? Oh, dude, we're gonna, you're going to let us give shots to people. You can't just well, do 13, US man. Opposed to join Come on. Developed <laughs> nations in an international those rookie numbers, man. Yeah, pump those up, dude. Come on. Let's go for 70. Shoot for 70 in a game. Come dude, on, man. Dude, that's, that's 13, crazy. dude. You know how many countries there are? <laughs> Fucking dude. Remember I told you that I suspected that there was a huge correlation between when they started giving vaccines to people in America to the correlation of diseases that ends up happening in this in this country it's interesting and it states bro. that we live longer now than we ever have before do we though like do we really though? right so he, he links some interesting stuff here he cites some studies dude talks about the materials used and stuff i just think it's interesting correlations between things and the population and the start of you know just like when we looked up wars man it had a really big correlation when the 13 families started booming <laughs> And busting. That was a really cool in connection. In between the 16th and like 17th, that. bro, that was real interesting to me because that's when they started booming. Those were the times where they started on the come up, some would say. Yeah. You know, that's when they started moving from their country that they were from over to, to the America and, and to, to, to start their whole thing over there, you know? Hit it. A collaborative effort of research in human reproduction and fertility control covering uh, big medical and socioeconomic factors. The U.S. further offered uh, to collaborate with other interested donor countries and organizations, and they list World Health, UN Population Fund, World Bank, UNICEF, to encourage further action by lesser developed country governments. Um, so they were going to do some research, science. The methods of NSSM, they wanted it to be inexpensive and safe. They wanted it to be perceived as safe, for sure. Uh, Non-physician, which means they wanted... I love this guy's humor. Relations and enough doctors to do. So dry. Vaccines are perfect for that. You don't have to be a physician in these countries to vaccinate. There were no ideal methods in 1974. The NSSM agreed that we, can't, we don't have the right stuff to do it. It's going to take research. The usual methods would be impl implemented until then. Birth control, mechanical, uh, like condoms, IUDs, rhythm technique, sterilization, uh, ovulation disruption methods, chemically. But this thing just jumped off the page. This is from NSSM uh, 25, 30 years ago. Injectable contraceptives for women, which are effective for three months or more. Didn't exist back then. It sounds like a vaccine, potentially. Next question, does Gavi partners, what are their backgrounds? So we're really kind of looking at Gavi now. I mean, they're in my radar. Uh, are these the uh, NSSM 200 folks? So let's take a close look at who's, who the members. Bill Gates, what do we know? I want this guy as my lawyer. He has donated uh, <laughs> billions of dollars to abortion. Um, and this is just some of that, but one of those jumps off the page. $2.2 billion to the UN Population Fund on February 11th. That's 2.1199. So he's Bill. donated a lot. For a man who wants to improve health, Bill. doesn't seem to have a respect for life. Here's a quote from the Seattle PI reporter on Bill Gates. An interest in family planning brought the Gateses to the door of Seattle nonprofit firm called PATH, Program for Appropriate Technology and Health. PATH has spent years working on population reproductive health and vaccine safety. Should those be in the same sentence? Uh, to Somebody the in the audience said no. Doing. He doesn't know. Another quote, back, and this is Bill Gates talking, and I can just see how nervous he was when he was asked by this reporter. Vaccination campaigns often run into this question. Is there some hidden agenda? Something wrong with it? Even in the United States, you'll often see articles about the anti-vaccine crowd, and the awful thing is that you can scare people away. And in many cases, even the rich countries, you've ended up with a lack of coverage that has ended up in children dying. So somebody brought that up. Other members of Gabby, I won't talk about, but there's two excellent sources on the disc, UN Population Fund and UN United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF. In a word, coercive population control, coercive what? reproductive, coercive abortion, coercive sterilization. The, uh, it's, it's just too big of an issue to tackle, but 
the, the allegations and the uh, more recommendations. Of that. If you guys want to go deeper, World Bank. Why are bankers involved with this? What? I think this uh, to make a, again follow it's a huge the money. World dude. Bank is a big issue. Follow money. One peeps. quote um, from an article written by a journalist uh, from New York in a, the Reporters Collective, and this is on the disc too. Very hard to find. I had to go to the internet and go through archives to find it because the website disappeared. But there's hundreds of articles on this. It has been a matter of general understanding for years that population control policies, government directives, and actions to prevent births are made a condition for development, lending, and economic assistance. Uh -huh. So you can guess why the bank is there. They're there to give incentives to nations who will agree to introduce population control measures, and they're there to restrict benefits in times of crisis, like famines. So there's a certain opportunity for coercion. There's one player missing from Gabby. It wasn't listed on the vaccine fund, but it was implied in the, in the journalism piece that I read. This is from an article from, uh, again, Seattle newspaper. The Rockefeller Foundation is a member of Gabby. Hmm. Now, I was I've been a disciple of Dr. Stan's source for that many years. It's so hot I really here. didn't know much about the Rockefellers, other than they had a nice home in Manhattan. Um, here's an article that uh, Gates quotes the Rockefellers, and this is uh, Rockefeller University News and, and uh, Press. Gates says that taking our lead and our inspiration from work already done by the Rockefeller Foundation, our foundation actually started Gabby. He also praised the Rockefeller family family century of philanthropy, saying it seems like every new corner we turn, the Rockefellers are already there, and in some cases they have been there for a long, long time. Really? Mm. Um, huh. I was doing some research on Casey Smithburn, who was a scientist in 1931 that did the famerosal study in Indianapolis who killed all the patients. And I found, when I was Googling, I found that his records were stored in the Rockefeller archives. So I went to their website, and it turns out you know, he was a Rockefeller scientist. But it's interesting that, that the Rockefellers, who are now funding vaccine programs, who have written the Rockefeller Commission report, they st basically were involved with the research that introduced mercury in vaccines. And, and you can see the little splash screen on the right here. J.D. Rockefeller III established a population council in 1952 and played a leading role in the efforts to bring the problem of overpopulation to global attention. A lot of coincidences. On the wow. same website, a lot of coincidences. Papers, by the way, a One of the 13 families, if you don't know who the Rockefellers the are. Years of the, the Marisol studies were missing from these. So, a little splash screen came out in 1911, interesting year. Peyton Rouse, a scientist at the Rochester, Rock, uh, Rockefeller Institute of Medical Research, discovered that viruses can cause cancer. He got the Nobel Prize in another interesting year, 1966. Shit. And uh, we have SP40 and uh, polio vaccine contamination issues. Who was the first scientist that discovered viruses can cause cancer? A Rockefeller scientist. Fourteen mm. members of the Institute of Medicine are currently associated with the Rockefeller University. This is from the Rockefeller website. National Academies tells you that at present, 33 faculty of Rockefeller University are elected members of the U.S. National Academies of Science, which include Institute of Medicine. So we have this kind of uh, very close relationship between the Rockefellers and the Institute of Medicine that looked at all these vaccine safety issues. Of course, the ones who did the research, the ones who looked at the safety that. issues, and the ones who are producing the Next product, question. giving it out. Since Gabby's public interest is apparently <laughs> counter to population Fucking growth, what, is there a hidden agenda, which means, are there anti-fertility vaccines? Now, we know mercury is a candidate, but I can't tell you there's motivation. Dear. Now, this blew me away. How many people know that there are uh, sterilizing abortion anti-fertility vaccines? Has anyone heard of those? I mean, and you're a savvy crowd. I mean, you, you guys are on the edge of a lot of stuff. I guarantee you, I mean, I can go to a medical conference. Who's heard this? I went to PubMed, which searches for journals. I just put in a general term, birth control vaccine. I still go to PubMed now. Papers. There are thousands of papers on birth control vaccines, and they've been in use. They're not available at the corner uh, drugstore. There's a textbook, one of many textbooks on it, medical text. There are journalistic pieces that are uh, trying to combat this. And this is mostly the pro-life crowd that knows about this stuff, it seems. And there's even a medical journal and a medical society in reproductive immunology. These I took from published peer-reviewed papers on who's funding some of this research in anti-fertility vaccines. Here they are, Rockefeller Foundation, <laughs> Population Council, Population Council. Here's a review article in 1991 in Human Reproduction. World Health Organization Task Force on Vaccines for Fertility Regulation. I circled it was established in 1972. When was the Rockefeller Commission Report published? 1972 and SSM 1974. So it seems like they already had in mind what they were going to do. That's the implication. Here's who's doing research on immunosuppressive uh, vaccines. Population Council of New York, big time, millions and millions of dollars. Special program in human reproduction at World Health. A big one in New Delhi, dude. NII, that's the National Institute of Immunology, Dr. Talwar. 1952. Uh, Conrad, which is a research and development organization. Had to just, but first they had to take right, over the whole. Right before that, the Orson Welles, right before all that. Yeah. They just had to take over all the medical stuff first. I mean, so how you can is just that push a, it through? How is how is that allowed that you're the person to, that can be the researcher and the judge that has to judge the, how on the you fucking be the safety judge, stuff? Jury and execution. <laughs> <laughs> because how the you're, fuck is that possible? Because you're one of the thirteen, bro. 
Come on, because man. you're feeding all that money into the medical field, so you're allowed to do whatever you want. That's crazy to me. Um, how that's not been sanctioned or been been taken over and and fixed because that's just something that shouldn't be able to happen like that. You know, I mean, that, that to have anyone in complete control of something like that, I mean, you know, they could sweep anything under the rug. They can they could do anything. It's to allow someone to have that much power is incredible to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, our president does have doesn't have that much power. It's interesting. What minutes are we out here, Chris? For this video like i'm recording yeah, no for the uh video um, we're watching oh shit it went back we were at like 20 something okay yeah because i think once we they got waiting up to like 39 but we don't have to go that far i just wanted him to like do some of this rockefeller connection shit that he was talking about and then he's gonna and he also talks about like the mercury and one other thing that they're putting in the vaccines and, like, some of the studies that have shown how those are harmful. I mean, it makes complete sense. I mean... Yeah, you think that... If you guys want to go watch it, yeah. Global you vaccine think, you think campaigns are... Gen- yeah, you, you, you think Dr. Peasants, David Aioli. You think the peasants ever ate the food that the kings ate? Yeah, of course not, dude. No. <laughs> Never. Interesting episode. I, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was boring. I was like, Kissinger report. I gotta read. It's fucking stupid. I couldn't find a video on it. Like, oh my god, I can't wait to do this stupid, boring grandpa episode. And uh, you know, David strikes again. It's pretty interesting episode. With a lot of uh, a lot of key intricate parts that were uh, cool connections. Yeah, I played some interesting connections throughout. The journey continues. Players. Yeah, it was very interesting. Um, very interesting story. A lot of substance. Uh, a lot of truth to it. Uh, some propaganda behind it. Very interesting. It was a fun one to do. I definitely had a good time. Doing yeah, some of the stuff that they blatantly said in that. Uh, Straight up blatant, bro. That was interesting. Straight up blatant. Coming out and saying it, dog. Mm. Crazy. Peasants, bro. We're just pez, bro. We just got to make sure we keep farming. Pez dispenser. Get your garden. Wait till that's everybody illegal, your, dude. Fuck yeah, that's, that's gonna be <laughs> hilarious. Get your gardens going, everybody. <laughs> well, you know, get your herbs and your basils growing, people. Get your water before they start regulating. Figure it out. Yeah, right. Before you just, you know, every breath you take is gonna cost you money. Every breath you take will uh, be watching you. That was thirteen you. breaths. You're, uh, you owe me thirteen dollars. <laughs> that's why they got the vapes. You, now, you owe me dude. thirteen cubits. All right, thanks for listening. We'll have another banger for you next week. Catch you all later. (laughs) This is the Conspiracy Commission Podcast.